What's important? What do you want? Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Um, don't misunderstand my tone here when I say, what are you doing here? Um, so I think all of us are about something. There's something, there's some reason that we go. And they talk about goals, having goals, that you're driven by your goals. And they talk about what they call ends goals and means goals. That um, money is not really an end goal, it's a means goal. It's to get you to what you want, your new computer, your whatever, your illusion of happiness. And um, so I'd say, okay, well, we're here to learn creativity or Aikido or whatever it is. But why? What is the end goal? What is it going to happen if you, let's say you were really good at Aikido, what would it do for you? So let me say again, I appreciate you being here. I want to always encourage you to start listening to the impulse to breathe, connecting the you that breathes consciously with the deeper you that's connected to the universal life force that breathes you anyway. And again, highlighting this idea of identity. Are you the one that breathes consciously or are you the one that's already breathing? And we had a really nice piece with, um, when I did the Aikido Beyond Borders piece, uh, I play music so I tend to use musical metaphors a lot. And I was talking with one of the guys and he said, no, he's a, uh, he was a drummer, I guess. And he said, musical metaphors work good. And he's saying, don't you just kind of want to learn the muscle memory thing? And my, my comment is, there is a place where you want it to become sort of automatic. But when you play music, you don't want to sound like a computer playing music. You want to bring your human feeling to that music. So, we do want to connect with that original source of breath and the universal connection that implies of us being part of a life flow that's gone on for eons. And we also want to bring our conscious attention into it so that when we play our musical piece or live our life as a piece of music, that we bring feeling to it. And I mentioned a movie called Isaac Stern in China and uh, he's teaching the Chinese who play perfectly, but they sound like computers, to bring human feeling to it. So I want to say it's neither one nor the other. It's standing on the floating bridge. And again, I think I read this last time. Um, Bill Gleason in his book only mentions a little teeny bit about the floating bridge, but he said this, two forces Bringing them together is standing on the floating bridge of heaven. And then he said, wisdom and compassion at one with the universal spirit. This is to stand on the floating bridge of heaven. And this is the line I think that relates again to our work here. Individual will merges with that of the universe and creativity begins. And that's why Osensei said things like, there are no kata in Aiki Budo. Every, every experience is different. Every moment is different. And he said, um, yesterday's technique won't be good enough today. And today's technique won't be good enough tomorrow. So as we listen to the impulse to breathe, we're also bringing our own feeling of how we feel good with that, how we can apply that information of the whisperings of the kami coming through our impulse to breathe and and that's the accessible dimension of it. Uh, and as I said, you know, if I asked you to slow your heart down, most of you couldn't. But if I asked you to slow your breath down, everybody could. And if you slow your breath down, eventually it reaches that finer dimension of slowing your heart down or your metabolic rate. So we start with the tangible, listening to the impulse to breathe. And then, like I said, you kind of feel where is that coming from? Now, that's not an idea. It's not a location. It's a sense that you're feeling that impulse somewhere as you tune into where and how you're feeling it. All of this shifts the dimension that you're in. I'm going to invite you to stand up. Please feel free to stay seated. Do whatever works best for you. 
that's how it works in my class. And um, I'm just noticing my breath. I'm enjoying my breath because joy is the greatest treasure. And I'm adding a little bit of myself to it. So I'm taking that impulse and I'm adding my own volition to it and breathing a little deeper. And as I do, I notice I'm starting to move. I'm guessing if you feel your body a little bit, there are little places where you kind of want to stretch a little bit or wiggle a little bit or maybe lean a little more backwards or forwards or whatever to bring yourself to a more... Let's start off on the first dimension, kind of a more comfortable feeling. And then as we get comfortable, I'm going to say probably pretty quickly you'll notice, you'll notice more. You'll notice your surroundings more. You'll notice how you feel more. You'll get a little more present. And as you start to get a little more present, if you can keep all this connected here, and uh, so I was talking about playing a musical piece with feeling and breathing with feeling and moving with feeling. There was another quote, and I've heard it translated different, but when I was talking to Bill Gleason, uh, he said, uh, the way he translated it was, and I, I don't know the Japanese, feeling gives birth to the movement. And it's always what I'm trying to get people into in this just trusting your feeling. And you may be uh, feeling like standing still. You may get to a kind of a physically quiet place. You may get to a movement place. But if you're feeling what you're feeling and you're like you're listening to your impulse to breathe and adding your volition to it, Again, for me, I'm a, I'm a bit of a dancer and uh, much more of a dancer than a martial artist. Uh, and uh, so I'd much rather dance with you than fight with you, you know, whatever. And so this is a lot of my expression was through movement. So you can imagine I didn't do all that well in school uh, when they told me to sit still at my desk and stuff like that. I had quite a different relationship there because there was no sense of allowing this freedom. And so what I want to say is no one is going to give that to you. You have to give it to yourself. You have to listen to the commies guidance yourself. You have to allow yourself to breathe, feel, move, be who you are. And it's why I'm back to this. It's your art now. And when you start this process, and you open to it a little bit more and you feel it a little bit more and you allow it a little bit more. <sighs> then you start to become more and more who you are. You, you know, sensei's term, accomplish your bestowed mission. I don't think that meant, you know, particularly some task. I think it meant being you and the way I talk about it is bringing your part to the symphony, bringing your, playing your part in the symphony with your feeling, bringing the uniqueness and yet fitting it into the whole, being part of both at the same time. That's our floating bridge approach. Okay? So I want to go back to a little bit of what we played with last week. Uh, as you start this, listening to the impulse to breathe, connecting your volition to that, meaning really enjoying the in-breath, really enjoying when the breath holds for a minute. Sometimes you'll, you'll feel that you just kind of want to stay there for a minute or you want to hold it out for a minute or whatever. And as long as you're letting yourself go to that, there should be an automatic in the allowing. And we played with it in the physical and I'm already moving to a finer dimension. But in the physical, I think we did a forward, back, left, right, and kind of got to that centered place. And once you're aligned with the force of gravity, once your alignment is correct in your position physically in the world, the skeletal structure holds you up and your muscles can relax. You can allow yourself to be there more. You can allow the energy to flow more freely. As that happens, the oxygen exchanges more freely at the cellular level. All the stuff starts to happen. 
And at the next level of dimension, once you're more alive, present, uh, oxygenated, all those things, your feeling intensifies, your sensitivity increases. And your thinking becomes more creative. You start to connect this experience of yourself with a larger sense. And eventually it does become universal. <clears throat> but as Bob used to say or said to me the other day, oh, Sensei always said, that's quite a jump. It's a small jump to allow your energy to flow a little more freely. And I'm playing with it in movement here. If I were in a conversation, it would mean just speaking more authentically, more candidly, more openly, whatever. Uh, being who you are in this moment and standing on the floating bridge is that connecting your volition with the universal will. Again, how do I do that? That's not who I'm talking to now. I'm just saying, let yourself feel what you feel. Feel where you are. Bob says if you're a 10 pound unit, you start there. I just say feel where you are. Feel where you are tight. Feel where you're relaxed. Feel where the breath seems to be permeating. Feel if there are areas where it doesn't seem to be. Don't do a lot about it. Just pay attention. Okay. And so as we start this opening, allowing, call it relaxing, allowing, opening, settling, there's a connection of us with the ground a little bit more. And you can tell, that's why we use the word uptight, we're disconnected, we're lightweight in that sense. And when somebody is really grounded, they're heavyweight, they're harder to lift up, they're harder to knock off their quality of being or whatever. And so we played last week with the gravity shadow a lot. I want to go back into that. And so as you feel yourself relaxing and enjoying the support of the earth or standing on the earth, the earth is absorbing your weight. And wherever that weight is dispersing into the earth is what I'm calling your gravity shadow. And I'm just going to play with, let it go into the whole earth. I know the head's going to go, gee, how do I do that? That's okay. But imagine, pretend you can feel your weight transferring into the earth. So as you go into that gravity shadow, uh, let's do a two-step. Face one direction, just turn around and face the other direction. If you're an Aikido person, you'll have a specific way of doing that. If you've never done this before, don't worry, be happy. Face one direction, turn around and face the other direction. Now that's usually enough to take us out of the moment and if we do it fast enough, we kind of get dizzy and this upward motion starts to happen. So consciously soaking into the gravity shadow, doing the turn, two-step, whatever, soaking into the gravity shadow. Soaking into the gravity shadow, doing the two-step, soaking into the gravity shadow. Feeling it disperse into the earth. And use your imagination at first, but you can always tell a little by how tight your muscles are or how less than open you feel at the next finer dimension or how your breath starts to constrict or get shallower or tighter. All those things are guidelines, they're keys. They're like when your uke is, seems like they're resisting you, you're obviously not feeling them well enough. So this, into it. Now let's take it one more notch. Feeling the gravity shadow as we turn. You've got the turn down enough, you should be able to relax into it. And what's important is not the turn, but the gravity shadow, okay? And then I'm going to hold my hands and bring them up and down. And even that was enough to disturb my balance the first time. Okay, up and down. Those of you who are Aikido people could imagine we're doing a Shihonage here or uh, sword strike, basically the same move. And one more, up, down, now. Gravity shadow, up, down, turn, gravity shadow. One more. 
Oh, one more. And again, when you hit gravity shadow here, what I'm saying is open, allow, settle, connect to the ground, and feel your weight going into the ground. Now let's do it a couple more times at your own speed. You don't have to do it at my speed. But staying connected with the ground, staying connected with that gravity shadow the whole time that you're turning. Okay? So this was a piece that I lost for you last week. Uh, we had some computer glitch again and it took my mind off and then I can't remember what I'm doing. So I'm going to now have my imaginary uke grab my wrist. I'm getting ready for a shihonage here. And as I do my gravity shadow, my gravity shadow spirals. And my gravity shadow picks up their gravity shadow magnetically and spirals their magnetic gravity shadow. First trip, gee, that's far out. Second trip, gee, I don't know how I would do that. But after a couple, you just start to feel yourself under the ground, or deeper or connected to the earth or whatever words we use. Gravity shadow is cute, it's not important. And that you could feel that the magnetic movement of your weight, your gravity shadow, your dispersion into the earth, your connectedness with a larger or more total universe is affecting your partners. And this is where I was saying I, I would do this technique with people. And uh, I think a lot of people at this point in Shihonagi pulled down to bring their partner down. I would just let go at this point and they would fall because I was operating in a finer dimension. I was operating with the power beneath the mat is the way I like to talk about it. But again, these are just words trying to describe a feeling. And when you let your weight drop and you feel that dispersion of your weight into the earth and that connection, then you can imagine that connection affecting your partner. So do a couple more on your own timing. I'm just going to say a few more things as you do. It's probably a chance that some energy gets stuck in the shoulders and you're still thinking in the hands and all that. And that's just life. But training is to bring your attention to the alignment with the gravity, to the allowing that happens naturally when you do that. And to focus our attention on appreciating that open, settle, allowing, relaxing, um, grounding, flowing, whatever words we're going to use to talk about this state, okay? So maybe we'll do a minute of standing meditation, see if we can get clear with this feeling. If you like to, and I like to exaggerate this whenever I'm trying to relax, I tense up just a little bit and then I relax. And then maybe I teeny bit, tense up just a teeniest little bit and relax. And then I start to think about tensing up and relax. Like that, okay? So I use those polarities to bring myself to the next dimension of it. And there actually is a qigong exercise that kind of plays with that. Um, let me just check our time here. Okay, we're good. Um, I want to show you another exercise here. Uh, and just play along with me for a minute. We're not going to go a lot longer with the exercises because I want to come back and say, why are we here? What are we training? Again, uh, I don't think most of us are here for martial arts. Uh, maybe we are. I certainly was for a while. But... Why I always loved yoga, there was nobody you were competing against. There was nothing to prove. There was nothing to do. There was nothing other than you connecting with this universal self. And I know a lot of people do yoga now to look better or, or whatever or, or to be healthier or something. And that's all good. That's fine. But I was into yoga for this universal connection or something. This union of the sun and the moon, of the self with the universe. And that's when I got into Aikido and I saw Sensei's words, I thought, oh yeah, okay, okay.
So, if we were to say to you, let's do a minute, actually, let's do a minute, just meditation, standing meditation, just to let all this go, calm the spirit, return to the source. And I think I go back to the ground and the gravity shadow. And they're just words to help you get into a feeling that's your own feeling. You may find your own words. So Bob talks about good days and bad days, whatever. You're not the same. Some days are better than others. Some moments you're better than others. Some different feelings come through you and all that. But let's play it this way. If, if I were to ask you right now to rate yourself on a scale of, let's call it 1 to 10, arbitrary numbers, but let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, right now I'm feeling about, and you get to say whatever number that is, okay? And let's just check it once more. On a scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling right now? Is it the same number that it was a minute ago or did you just paying attention to it? change that? Did it get better? Did it actually you start to notice stuff you didn't notice? It got worse. It doesn't matter. And none of this is right or wrong. None of this matters. It's a game you play. Play the game as Bob used to say. So you're on a scale of 1 to 10. You're at a X, whatever your number is right now. So I'm at a 6.3579. Okay somewhere between six and seven, okay? And um, I want you to play with the idea of breathing, centering, opening, relaxing, allowing, and if you're at a six, doesn't have to be exact again, approximately a six, go to approximately a seven. What would that feel like? And just imagine for a moment, what would it feel like if you, if you could just move to a seven? What would a seven have felt like? And I bet you won't like this as well, but go back to your six or five or whatever your X number was. Uh, do feel free to unmute your mic and ask me a question if I'm not being clear enough or you need help doing this. You're not going to interrupt me. I'm only doing this for you, so please. But okay, so you're at six. You imagined a seven. You're back at a six. You'll hate this. Go to a five or whatever the next number down for you. If you were a three, go to a two. Feel it. Notice what that feels like. Pay attention to it. Okay? And then come back to whatever your X number was. I was at a six, so whatever. And let's go to a seven again. What happens? And I want to come back in a minute. We'll sit together and talk about this. So Make mental notes. If you need to, stop and write it down on a piece of paper. How can you tell a six from a seven? What, what do you notice that's different? And let's go back to a six again, or whatever your X number was. Go down a number. And, and down one more, down to a, what would it be like if you're just having one of those lesser days? And then back up to your number again. And notice how something actually changes if you play the game. If you just kind of imagine what it would be like if. You can actually feel a difference there. So I'm going to say, let's go on up to the next number, whatever you were at. I was at a 6. I'm going up to a 7. Now I'm imagining, what would it be like if I went up to an 8? Okay. And then we could talk about this. I'm not going to because I want to hear yours. I want you to experience your own before I start talking about mine. Because it, it's not like you should follow mine or mine are the right ones. And just for the fun of it, as it were, let's go back down. Whatever you were at, go down one again. and. All right, and I'm back to my seven, whatever you're at, fine. Up to eight again. What would it feel like if all of a sudden you were in that next better place with yourself 
next better relationship to the universe, more enjoying being yourself, more enjoying being here, more open, more settled, calmer, more connected to the spirit, whatever words work for you. And I'm going to say let's go up one more. And again, when we start these, there's kind of a, a bounce in that, huh, what would that be like, uh, thinky kind of thing, and that, that's fine, that's fine, but, but play the game. What if you actually felt, uh, I'm now up to a nine or an eight, I can't even remember anymore, who cares, but the next more open, more present, more grounded, more full, more key is flowing out my fingertips, as it were. Now I'm getting this little game like I want to, uh, play like there are little laser beams coming out of my fingertips and I'm drawing on the walls with them a little bit there. There's just a, a much greater sense of extension or expansion. Something like that, okay? And then I'm going to assume there's a little bit of a head tripping with it, so I'm going to play a little left, right, front, back. and grounding into it a little bit more completely and originally. Okay, we good? So let's go up one more, whatever it is, and whatever you're bumping into, just open up. Play the game this way. What would a 10 be like? And if, if you're at a three and that's too much, go to a five or a six or a seven, whatever. Get us. All right, well, let me just pause for a second here. We're going to take this one more notch. Um, is everybody able to play the game a little bit? Is everybody able to have the experience a little bit? Of uh, making this shift, I'm going to use a fancy word here, of intention. So I'm playing with what would a 10 be like? Uh, if I can't get there, that's all right. If I can only get to a 7 or whatever your number is, but as close as you can go to a 10, whatever, you know, you start to play that and I want you to notice what changes if we need to do it. And I think maybe we could waste a minute to save a minute, as they say. Go back down to a lower number and go below wherever you were for a minute. And I think you can just feel the light dim. Uh, spirit become denser, something like that. Just, you just feel like heavier uh, emotionally or whatever. And back up, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Whatever your numbers are, just keep going. Just get up to whatever ten is for you at this moment in time and it's not the ultimate, but it's just for today at the way you're feeling, it's like, you know, it's the way you'd like to be when you went in for a job interview. It's the way you'd like to be if you were going out on a date with someone you thought might be important in your life. It's the way you'd like to be if you were going to have an important moment with your kid or, or whatever. Uh, bet at the horse races, I don't know. So what would that be for you? What are you getting? And in a minute we'll stop and talk about it, but I'm saying in your own mind, make, make a note, notice what's going on. Appreciate this game that we're playing. Appreciate your experience from aligning and allowing and if we call this moving up the scale or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that we're all at, let's call it 10. And like I say, maybe that's just today's 10, we don't care. None of this matters. It's a little game. And I'm getting something where all of a sudden I can feel this connection that we've been talking about, gravity, shadow, whatever, just got a whole lot more experiential for me. It just started to feel it. Now when I go to talk about it, I don't know what to say. That's a different state. But for a minute there, as I was playing 10, it was like, I just, and you know, I happen to have a nice view out my window, but I just felt like this connection with a larger world, something like that. So, all right, so here, here's where I want to go. If you can take a minute and notice this little process and kind of don't have to go back there, but kind of remember what it was like 
at your other number, lower number, and kind of appreciate, enjoy this where you are now. Here's what I'd like you to do. If you're ready, as they say. Okay, this is now one on a new scale. And if this were one, what you used to call ten, this is one. On this scale, what would two be like on this scale? If you've been playing the game, that should blow you out a little bit. There should be a little, God, I don't know. I know that. I know you don't. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to that part of you that actually can make that shift volitionally, intentionally. Okay? Now, whereas before I had a laser coming out of kind of a finger or sort of like that, now they're coming out of all five fingers on both hands. And I don't see lights. It's not that. It's just an imaginary sense, if you want to call it that, of this flow of electromagnetic vitality. All right? So if that was two, go to three on this scale. Again, I know this is pushing it. Maybe we should go slower. But this is your exercise to take home and play with, okay? And for those of you who are into dancing, go ahead and let yourself move a little bit. For those of you who are into martial arts, call in an imaginary uke, do some movements with them. Feel free to stand still. Uh, use all your stretching and whatever to feel like you're allowing yourself to well you know there's whatever whatever that part of me is that still uh, has been told to sit still or, or whatever or you know don't disturb the room or something like that it, it's your art now this is completely you for you and whatever feels right to you and whatever you enjoy because joy is the greatest treasure so, love yourself, love what you're feeling, love it. Let's go to four on this new scale. And again, we're playing with inviting ourselves to choose a connection to the universe, uh, to choose a state of being, to choose an identity. And, you know, as soon as I'm done with class, I'm going to go back and sit down and bitch about whatever I feel like. But right now, I'm just going to go to five on this scale. Okay? And it's not as distinct as some of the earlier ones were, but there's a little, I'd go with brightness or something like that. Six, or whatever numbers you want to make up. H, I, J, I don't care. Use some foreign language, I don't care. Seven. Now right there, my, there's a part of me that's going, hey, I don't know how to, but I, you know, that's not the guy I want to talk to right now. I, I don't mind listening to him for a minute. I know he's got to say what he's got to say. Eight. All of a sudden, this one, I'm just going like, yes, I can feel, like Bob would say, I'm starting to smile now or whatever. I kind of get this other sense. And just for fun, we'll go just a couple more minutes here. Nine. Let's give nine an extra minute. Yeah, it's interesting. This one just got very quiet. I have that feeling now. Two, three guys on each side lifting up on my arms just couldn't move me and I'm not doing anything. I just feel this groundedness and connection, but your experience may be completely different, could be similar. Doesn't matter as long as you're feeling where you are, as you're feeling what's going on for you. And let's go to ten. The whole sky just got brighter for a minute too, without my losing my calmness, okay? And for the last minute now, this is one on a new scale. And let's go to two. 
And I'm getting that same, I imagine, I'm blown out, I'm not sure what to think about and all that. And Inevitably, you're one by one, as Bob calls them, can't handle the energy of a two by two. But if you hang out for a couple minutes, if you just hang out with it and play the game, okay? And I think just before we sit down, I call this exercise 10 to the 10th. Uh, if you go to the books and videos on the Extraordinary Listening site, it's written up if you want to go back to it, if you need help with it, but I think you've got the game. You can do it anytime, anywhere. Just play with it a little bit, see what it does for you. Before we sit down and talk about it, I'm going to invite you to get a dance partner or an imaginary uke and see if you can keep that gravity shadow and continue to move up the scale and it's fine when you move down the scale. Be there, notice it, square away to it because that's how you get to the next number on the scale, okay? And if we had more room or something, I was almost going to go outside and grab our Joes and do some freestyle with the Joe. I love to do that. Uh, I've killed so many imaginary people with my Joe, I can't tell you. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more minute here, connecting to the breath, moving up the scale as appropriate for you. A last moment or two of practice. And like I noticed my, my movement started to go into the legs a little bit more. At my age, my knees and joints and stuff don't feel that good. I tend to play a little higher, but all of a sudden I'm dropping into a, a much lower place. So I'm just, that's what's happening. I'm with it. I'm doing Aikido with it. I'm moving in harmony with my own experience. I'm moving in harmony with how I'm feeling. I'm feeling the energy of the universe as it flows through me. And I'm moving towards that experience of recognizing that actually all of this is an after effect. This energy itself is who I am. And slowly and on your own timing completely, Bring yourself back to your standing meditation whenever and however is appropriate for you. And the breath. And if you were at three or four, go up to five just for a second here for fun. Just for fun. And when you're ready, and if you want to stay there and play for another five minutes, there's no reason you have to sit down because I'm sitting down. And if and when you're ready, come on back in. And uh, let's take our last few minutes here and see if anybody wants to talk about their experience or while you're waiting, you're listening to the impulse to breathe and you're, if you choose to, you're playing with what, what would the next number feel like? The creation itself is, is going through its pulses and its beats and we are being affected by this stuff. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons that you're, it's moving you through different numbers. But I also want to come back to your intention. Uh, you have no idea how much of your experience is a story that you tell yourself. Why I keep saying to you, this is my story. You have to experience for yourself what's true for you. Don't take anything on my authority. Listen to your own inner teacher. And as you recognize this, uh, and don't, don't get me wrong, so I said, uh, you know, Ken has been through listening to me bitch about enough stuff to know that it's not that I live here all the time, but this is a practice that is available to you should you choose to use it. Uh, is the sequence, do you walk, go through the sequence in the same order you've laid out these classes, kind of? In terms of, you know, is there a series of practices? Oh, I have a big meeting tomorrow. Uh, you know, I want to get ready for it. Uh, you know, is the sequence of the classes that you presented kind of your sequence? 
I'm not sure that, that I would say that's so. I think that I laid them out in that sequence because I thought they would be most understandable in that way and that we could build them. I think if I had started with this one, it might have been not as powerful. Not that you couldn't have done it, but so. But here we go. Bob says to me, this is what he calls pulling a moon on. He says, I'm going to pull a moon on you. I'm going to say, what do you think? And, and what I would say is, back to your inner teacher, you, you've had the practices um, when you, let's see, I'll go back to my musical a metaphor here. Uh, you go ahead and you practice your scales. But when you go in to play with the band or whatever it is and they start to play a particular song or set a chord change or something like that, what you do at that moment is whatever. Now, knowing that you're going to be going in to play with the band, is there a particular set of scales or exercises or whatever that you do? Um, I think your inner teacher will tell you, like, for instance, when I, I don't know if this is helpful, but I hope so, that um, when I'm going out to play with the band, generally speaking, what I tend to work on is particular lead guitar stuff. My rhythm guitar is pretty solid. My lead guitar, I don't practice it enough. So that's where I generally put my work if I'm going into the band. Uh, almost inevitably listening to the impulse to breathe, almost inevitably align, allow, appreciate. Uh, and uh, 10 to the 10th for me is, is one that's like, um, you know, it's a special one. It's like, if I can get to it, that's good. If it calls me, that's good. I forget a lot of the time, but I'd say if I could do it, I'd do the whole pattern. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about that. Any of how do they, what do they say, many paths up Mount Fuji to the same summit. Any one of these practices, including just the simplistic listening to the impulse to breathe, starts to let you become who you are, and that's the greatest contribution you can make. So I don't know. Hi. Just, just Hi. I'll say something. That was great. I um, really appreciate that. It felt a lot like, yeah, Leonard Energy Chain, George Leonard's information I was thinking of again his book what he said when he got his black belt was that all of a sudden he became like a beginner like oh this is a beginner's mind and that's been my experience since the short amount of time I've been in, in Aikido is like this I have all of a sudden have a new beginner's mind with everything um so I appreciate that and um yeah that impulse to breathe feels like a, to me, it feels almost like a, like an innocent child, like going, oh, I can actually permission to do that. I can actually, you know, do that. And it's like a different, I don't know, beginner's mind is what's coming to me. So I'm complete. Yeah, yeah lovely. lovely. Um, I, I go, I like the word permission. And, and, um, and I play it against the term or the phrase bestowed mission. Make a chord out of those, as it were. So Richard, this is Lauren. Uh, I know you like to use the phrase bestowed mission, and it's a very wonderful phrase. Um, just to add to that, another way that I heard it expressed in Japan was uh, to find your destiny. To what are you here on earth, what is your soul in this plane? What, what is it supposed to do, all right? And when you find your destiny, uh, things seem to go much more swimmingly, you know? It's uh, because you're doing what you're supposed to do. And, and, and so uh, I've heard some teachers describe Aikido as a purification, like Nado Sensei talked about the other day, in order to free up the compass, the needle of your compass, so that it will swing to true north, your, your personal true north. And that all of our thinking gets in the way of that. And so the purpose of Aikido is to find your own destiny. Another way to say that is to fill your, fulfill your bestowed mission. So 
it's just, uh, uh, I like how you use it and I just want to add it to that, add to that. No, that's totally beautiful. I love that. True North. Um, very much so. And I, and like I say, it's, it's, you know, there are so many, uh, forces in the world kind of pushing on us and pulling on us and you know our dogs want to go for a walk when they want to go for a walk and all that stuff and we want to work in harmony with all that but there is some place where you stay true north to yourself when you take your dog for a walk or whatever you're go to work or you know go to a movie that maybe wasn't the one you would have chosen or the restaurant that wasn't the one you would have chosen um, and finding ways to stay in touch with that. That seems to me, that's beautiful, Lauren. I really, really appreciate that. I mean, it's exactly why I got into Aikido. And it's exactly the power that I think when we try to get a really strong Nikki or something, that's actually the power that we're seeking is to be who we are. And, uh, you know, I, I fall back to Osensei's words because they're better than mine and, and, um, and he has the credential on top of it. And so I keep coming back to bestow admission. I, I have no idea what the words mean, you know. But I, I like True North, actually. I think, you know, you know the phrase in Japanese, say one word here, ten words. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. That's great. Say one word here, ten words. Yes. You know, that we're, we're pointing towards that we really do not have a vocabulary for the realm that we're talking in. Uh, you know, we can say tree or car and it's pretty mundane and it's pretty translatable. But when we start talking about this stuff, it's we're creating a new language together and learning how to understand each other in a finer dimension. Um, to me, that's the fun, that's the joy of it. And it's also where the, the power starts to lie. And uh, I do believe that there is something very critical about true north. Uh, that, that really is working well for me right now that says that when you live that way and it's like I I feel like uh, Joseph Campbell used the term follow your bliss uh, again not perfect but if you can hear it in a generous way I think it points to a similar thing uh, there's some sense that uh, you don't fear death you live in such a different domain because it's like I, like I said, and I'm coming to the end of my life, folks, but I have no bucket list. There's nothing that I wish I'd done that I hadn't done. I just feel fine about it. I could go today, hookah hey, today's a good day to die. True North, thank you, Lauren. Hi, Richard, it's Sandeep. Um, I, um, I was having a really good session with my imaginary uke working with their gravity shadow. So that that whole practice was really, I felt powerful. Just not only feeling my own gravity shadow, but then merging with Uke's gravity shadow, that experience. If you ever get a chance to get back on the mat, you'll totally love it. I mean, when you get, when you get the feedback of how, how, you know, on one level, this is like an imaginary exercise for us right now, but I got to tell you that it's, um, it's part of a very real world. No, it's it definitely that whole the start of that was like last fall when I saw you at your workshop. I'm just sort of doing that that under the mat work, started getting me thinking about this in a different different way. And it seems like another iterative of that of just like you know the taking it next level to working with Uke or imaginary Uke. But yeah, it seemed exciting to uh, do this with a live partner. <laughs> I really think opening up our imagination, it's like I said, think inevitably when we move to a finer dimension, that's how it starts to appear as um, a finer dimension, uh, imaginary. Um, and like I tell the story about Melanie who, you know, she's learning Nikyo and her boyfriend's screwing with her and all of a sudden one night she comes in and does a Nikyo on him, just puts him on the floor. And that we start out and we're just, we're just faking it. We're practicing we're but at some point if you hang in there uh don juan says you know like we do all this stuff to try and be different to try and change but it's impossible to change and yet if you just keep doing it controlled folly i think was his expression uh at some point something starts to happen and uh actually sandeep you're one of the people that i think 
you know, I, I mean, I remember really seeing that in you, just watching you shift into virtually a different person over the years. And, uh, and I know some of that happens with age and experience, but I'm talking about a dimensional presence that's obvious, and I think I saw it in, in a lot of the students, and, and some less so. Some seemed to really go for it, and some were not quite as open, couldn't quite let go of the past identity as much, and uh, then that becomes your challenge, but appreciate it. Keep it up. Thank you. Thanks for leading me to my inner teacher. Richard, it's Roy. I just want oh, to nice thank to you. you. Yeah. I just want to thank you for the class and uh, all of the classes I've taken with you. I've always appreciated your teaching and what you have to offer. So thank you once again. Uh, you know, what I reached at with this for me as I was going through these levels was this kind of place of peacefulness or a place of peace that uh, I don't think I've quite gotten before. I mean, it was just uh, like I was in this realm of peace, but it wasn't like this kind of lightweight kind of, oh, happy kind of peace. It was really like this experience of like deep, profound peace. So uh, I'm going to play with this, but I just wanted to share that with you because it came out very strongly in this process following along with you. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, in, um, yoga, in yoga, they tell, they tell the story. story. And I, and I, I actually, actually relate, relate to what you're saying. saying. I, I had the same, same feeling when all of a sudden, I don't remember if you can remember, can remember when I was in this, all of a sudden it just got very quiet and, and, and deep. And deep. I, had I had something like, like that. that. And, and, um, in, yoga, in yoga, there's a story of when a person is mastered, they use the word ahimsa, which means non-violence or non-injury or non-negative feelings towards the world or other people or whatever. That, that in the, in the face, face of a yogi, yogi like that, like that the, lion the lion would lie down, lie down with, the with the lamb. And they, and they talk about Jesus that way or something, too. That when you hit that, you just you exude a quality. So, so that's, very that's a very beautiful, beautiful story. story. And, and I just say, keep, keep it up and, and, share, and share it with the, with the world. And, and good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to, Sensei, thank you. And just mention that this is really bringing me another way to think about um, and explore intention that's not really negative or positive, um, but intention and how it's related to impulse. And this, this is like a whole new set of doorways and, and pathways. Thank you. Good, good. Yeah, I think it's we're, we're much more powerful than we know, and the stories we tell ourselves are much more powerful. And what I try to remind myself, and I share with those who come and work with me, you know, you have no idea how much this is creativity, how much you're making up your story about what's going on. You're abstracting from the whole into the aspects of it that you either care to pay attention to or the way you care to describe them. So my recommendation is make good movies. Step into 10 to the 10th. Play with the game. And, and I think if you'll do that work, when you bring your piece to the symphony, the whole symphony will sound better. And it will do more to the people who have come to hear the symphony, as it were, the, you know, affect the audience a lot more. It will create a beautiful world. And it may not be enough. Bob said, oh, Sensei left going, you know, I should have done more. I could. So don't be too hard on yourself. But yes. We're close, folks. So if you got something, I'd love to hear it. And if we're done, we can wrap it up. Hi, Richard. It's Mike. I, I don't quite know Hi, why Mike. today, but following your exercises of going up through the, through the levels, I decided to... Um, play with my heart rate I've often tried to lower my heart rate as a conscious exercise um, but this time I just well it's the first time I've ever thought of my heart as a series of muscles you know I, I, I'm really good at uh, these days at being able to relax parts of my body by focusing on the muscles and just telling them to relax but I had never thought about I don't know why doing that with my heart and today that's what Beautiful. I actually focused on. And I, I dropped my heart. It was only by five beats, but it was from 75 to 70, which is over five minutes. It was, was an intriguing experience. Um, and also, I wanted to say that 
for me, one of the big things that I think in Aikido um, is important to develop between partners, if, if, as you say, we ever get back to training with partners, is trust. To be a good uke, you've got to know that you can trust Nage to be listening to you and hearing what you're able to do and not able to do. And if, if, if you can do that, then uke can start to relax. But if, if you don't trust the partner you're working with, then you always hold back a little bit. You resist a little bit. You, you try to protect yourself because you don't feel safe. And I think trust and safety are, are two important aspects of Aikido that, yeah, we could all spend more time with. Yeah, I was going to say that that could be a whole dialogue for one of these next sessions. But I would come back and say the greatest foundation of our wealth in this world is trust. And, and in that sense that it takes that for us to do anything with each other and the degree of trust is the, the degree to which we're able to work together and actually the trust in the universe to be ourselves. That's a whole exploration. That, that's a good place to go further, but that's a great, that's a great thing to hear. Thank you for that. I'm thinking we're almost there. For some reason, I'm before I launch into my closing, I'm kind of inclined to wait one more minute. Because there's one or two last little comments, and they may not be that important, but we'd like to hear them. All right. Danny, yeah, I'm just, um, I'm always wondering about the, bestowed mission and of, of late I, I think I'm understanding a bit more about it especially for myself anyway in every moment that um, kind of comes down to something pretty simple for me every moment I'm aware of myself and in the moment I the impulse to breathe and to carrying on with it and stay when when I'm in that place, I just find, well, here's Danny, here's the real me, and this is my bestowed mission. And uh, yes, I wander in and out of that. Like I wander into the unconscious breath and I kind of wander back to it. And that's where I really rest in myself. And you know, can, it's a pretty deep place to go to with what you're teaching, Richard, and using our bodies as well. And then there's, I chose to sit while you were doing it. And I found it very, very peaceful to just imagine all these, imagine my inner world moving and, and the light that came and the beautiful colors. And that's another part of me. And, and um, so it seems to me that it's, a, it's an ongoing journey and, and, <laughs> and who knows where this ends really. But um, yeah, that's that's what I'd like to contribute to this discussion. Thanks. Well, I'm I appreciate it. Appreciate you, and um, I'm just gonna share with you that I've always felt, um, and actually I, I said some stuff to Bob a number of times that I always felt like if I had, you know, back when you guys asked me to be your teacher or whatever it was, and I said no. Nah, just let's just let Bob be your teacher because he's really the guy anyway. And I don't think you need me in between you or something. I was almost sorry because the one thing I would have done, Danny, was I would have promoted you faster and I would have made you a higher ranked person. And I thought, because, you know, the trouble is you're actually you're a little like me. That's why I've let Bob be the guy. And, you know, I stay back. I don't really want to step forward that much, but you bring so much light and I thought if we'd have made you sixth or seventh on back when, you know, you would have shown up for it. And, and we let you hide out as a fucking fifth Don. And, you know, shame on us. But here's what I'm doing. I'm promoting you to seventh Don anyway. Okay. <laughs> and I'm with Mike in terms of just trust yourself even more, Danny. You got so much. You just, 
it, you know, I think, you know, everybody there loves you and, and, uh, and really this, we need more of you. Thank you for those lovely words. Thanks. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, go, go. I, I, I don't know. That's very generous of you. And, uh, yeah, I, I, it, it certainly is a new world, isn't it? And it's a reset for all of us. And, and I, I guess it's a time for us all to come forward with what we have to offer one another. And, um, and, um, I'm a very impatient man, and and but uh, I know it's going to take a lot of patience and 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 skill around what we say and do to have any chance of um, resetting the button uh, and maybe make that doomsday clock turn backwards. I don't know. But anyway, well, I I'm really I'm with, I'm with um, yeah, we can get back on the map and we can invite more people to Aikido. But I've got to say, these Zoom calls are pretty good. I'm amazed at how intimate they can be over so the distance. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to echo it one more time to Mike's comment and say, trust yourself. Show up, buddy. Okay, I still am with some noise in my energy field. I, I feel the disturbance in the force. There's somebody else out there who's got one more comment that they'd love to get in before we wrap this up. And I could be wrong, but I'm not usually. Hi, Richard. This is Bonnie. You're not wrong. <laughs> so, um, just some comments made earlier. Uh, just a thought came to mind. Enter the dojo. A new student trusts her senpai to not injure her as she learns Aikido. Um, how you walked us through the meditation today reminded me of um, one of the best Aikido teachers I know who never set foot in Aikido dojo and doesn't hold an Aikido belt. Um, a friend, Atasa, I met in Japan. He was a sitar player, a musician. And he was teaching me to play music by emphasizing listening to the silence, to the peace. Uh, how you walked us through the different levels, lifting us up and bringing us down, which is a part of life. Everything can't always go in the one direction we hope it to. The saying, eight steps forward, seven steps back, or jumping through the scales. Um, he played a his sitar music, when listening to it with the heart, just like listening to you speak with the heart, to me it felt like a similar transition. Um, so establishing the same vocabulary with each other because it's all new words, something we're trying to put words to that maybe shouldn't have words, but listening to the music progress up through the different levels, uh, it, it felt just like today and the way that you gently brought us up and also back into ourselves um, was also, I guess, comparable to a, a Nagi releasing Uke smoothly to the ground instead of just throwing them and letting them away. Like, oh, here, you're at level 10, smash. Um, so it did feel like a, a smooth transition back into the self and as a reminder of the different levels that I've been to and could go to again. So to end it, since I could probably ramble for hours and forget what I said, thank you for being such an extraordinary listener, putting up with my bullshit emails <laughs> and continuing these Zoom classes. So really appreciate you and everyone in the room. Lots of love from heart. Appreciate you, Bonnie, you bring a lot. And, um, you know, I guess I would say as, as we line it up, I think that your glow will only brighten and it will take less and show more. So keep it up. Thank you. I wouldn't stop anyone if you want to interrupt me and say anything more, but I will start my closing remarks, which are 
very much appreciate all of you. Um, and uh, I appreciate having this connection with, with people. I live in my little shelter in place world and have for, for a while now. So, um, it's good that, that you get me out. I, um, I was sitting here practicing my music thinking, God, should I be, should I be doing something? Should I be contributing this more? I, I feel like I, do have some very special pieces that I'd love to share into the Aikido world. And um, like I said, the, the whisperings of the Kami said to me, just keep practicing. If we need you, we'll call you. And then uh, we got this idea. We were going to do a Zoom call with Bob in New Zealand. And then this whole coronavirus thing happened. And we started working with Lauren to try and get Bob on a much more regular basis. And and we've been doing all this work to do this. And um, I'll just say again, Kenneth and Lauren have been uh, just incredible. And as all of you who've shown up and supported this have been. And uh, I just feel like, you know, I've laid out the things that are important to me. They're there in the archive classes. And these are the fundamentals that I have. And when I got the message again that said, okay, you can take a break now and go back and practice your trumpet. Um, I feel like these pieces, if you'll go back over these pieces, listen to them yourself, listen to the whisperings of the Kami, the Kami will teach you your next steps. And my feeling is, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably come back and do a class the first of June, it'd be June 6th or something, first Saturday in June. And maybe randomly or maybe monthly I'll come back or I would definitely will come back if I get a message from the Kami that I've got something more to share that's beyond what we've done here. But um, these fundamentals are there. I would point you back to the Extraordinary Listening site. Uh, all these books are there. Uh, there's some interesting stuff if you want to follow it out. I would point you back to the Moon Sensei channel on YouTube. There's a couple hundred videos of Bob and maybe, I don't know, a hundred of me and some other teachers and stuff like that. There are lots of resources to speak of. And, um, you know, just say it's, it's there, follow it out. I, I will point out to all of you that, um, you notice that it's moon sensei is one word, uh, not moon sensei, because back in the day, like I said, we just called him Bob and he said, you know, we're Americans. That's what we do. And we all called him Bob. And then this kind of Japanese thing came in and people started being more and more Japanese. And again, I have no problem with that. I don't care what kind of music you like or want to play or sing. That's, that's all fine. But I don't want us to confuse the Japanese culture with the art of Aikido. Since it was very clear, it doesn't belong to any nation. It, it belongs to the whole world and it's to reconcile the world and make human beings one family to, as I say, if all the energy and creativity that had been put into war and even arguments between people had gone into creating a beautiful world of us together, what we might have created, and I'd say what we still might create. So on that note, I'd say, well, when it's right, I'll show up and teach again. But in the meantime, I'm always available to you. You can reach me. I'm happy to chat with you and uh, teach if that's the right word or work together to try and help you develop your art more. Uh, I am thinking we'll do another Aiki dialogue. It was such a great session last Monday and um, probably on the 1st of June. All this is up in the air as our whole world seems to be these days. And uh, that said, I think I'm complete. If anyone has anything, we can take a last minute before we close this session. And you have my appreciation, all of you. Uh, thanks for being with me and helping me grow, as I hope we've shared that together. <laughs>